Um, in this example, I'm going to be looking at how we can make geographic maps. And there's different tools in Python you could use to do this. Um, the one that I really like is GeoPandas, and you can see some examples in the gallery here. Another one that a lot of people um, will find that actually looks a little bit nicer is something called Folium. And, uh, and it's pretty easy to use, uh, but I'm not a big fan for a couple reasons. Um, one is that it requires that you have to be online, right? So if I come to this Folium map here and I scroll around, you can see that it's creating all of this network traffic as I go. If I'm offline, I can't use these maps. And um, another thing is that uh, it might feel like an interactive map is an advantage, uh, but from my perspective, when you're trying to communicate about data, you want to tell the audience what they should be looking at, right? You want to just have them digging through it themselves. You want to bring their focus um, to specific things, right? So that's one reason I like GeoPandas, even though uh, perhaps they don't look quite as crisp uh, visually, uh, you can make these offline without internet access. You can put them in PDFs and then your results are probably going to be, you know, still supported a hundred years from now, right? I'm sure people will still be using PDFs a hundred years from now. Uh, people probably won't be using Folium a hundred years from now. So let me give you an example of um, uh, what I'm going to be working towards today. Um, we're going to try to create a map like this of uh, South America and all the countries in it. And it's going to show two things. First, it's going to show um, you know, the population density of each country and then some major cities. Okay, so I'm going to head over here to an empty notebook. Um, I've already installed uh, GeoPandas. If it turns out, um, it's a little bit tricky if I go to the installation. One of the things you're going to notice is that um, there's all these other packages that GeoPandas uses that don't get installed automatically, right? So you often have to go back and install those yourself. Um, and maybe we've already done that based on some directions in the project. Anyway, I've installed it here and all the dependencies. And so I'm just going to say import GeoPandas. And uh, in GeoPandas, right, so you can already, already guess that this is based on Pandas, but has um, support for geographic data. Um, they have this thing called... Um, geopandas.datasets.getpath. And what this will do is it'll show us where we have different data sets installed if we give it a name. So let, let me just do this one. So I know that there's one called natural earth uh, low resolution. And I do that and it shows me this path to this SHP file. Uh, that stands for a shape file. So shape files are a very common format for geographic data. GeoPandas works with it. Um, ArcGIS, maybe something you've heard of, works with it. Lots of different tools, okay? So that's a path to that data. And, um, and, and let me just put this, uh, let me grab this piece right here. Let me see what else is there. If I import, import OS as well, and then down here I say os.list dir, and I paste that. So notice this is not the shape file, but um, uh, but the directory that it's in, if I run that, you actually see there's a bunch of different files. So uh, shape files are rarely alone. They come with all these other um, things that have supporting information. And so if you're looking for shape files online, uh, you might end up uh, kind of downloading these zips that have a bunch of different files inside of them. Okay, so this is my path. So let me, let me put that in my path. Maybe, maybe let me actually call this, um, this will be my world path. And, uh, and so I have that. Actually, while I'm at it, let me, let me look at one other thing. I have some more data here as well. If I go to the data sets and, um, and I do a list dir there, I see there's also this natural earth cities thing. So I'm just gonna grab that too. Uh, so this will be my cities path. And this is gonna give us two data sets that we can play with during this lecture. So natural earth uh, cities, maybe just, let me just see what that path looks like. Mm, and uh, and because I misspelled it. Okay, there we go, another shape file. Okay, so I have that. So the next thing I can do is I can get a GeoPandas data frame uh, from one of these files. And the way I'll do that is very simple. I'll just say a geopandas.read file, and, um, and then I could pass it in one of these paths. So maybe I'll do this one for now. Um, so I'll grab the world there. And I see that basically gives me a data frame. So maybe I'll call that a world data frame 
Oh my, so let me also get the city's data frame while I'm at it and then I'll look a little bit more detail what's inside of these. So I want to get the city's data frame. Uh, actually, I'll just leave this here for now. We'll do one at a time. So I have that one and, uh, and that one. Oh, city's path. Oh, what am I doing? Cities data frame equals that one. Okay, I have both of these. And so I can look at them and they look like regular data frames. I can use them the way I might expect to. Um, here I see I have a bunch of different columns in the world DF. Then the cities DF, it's a little bit more minimalist. I just have these two columns. Uh, but what you really notice is that they both have this geometry column. Okay, and that actually describes the shape of whatever we're dealing with. And so in this case, when I'm looking at cities, cities are just a point in space. If I go back to a world, I see my geometry consists of polygons, right? Some countries uh, look like a polygon. Maybe other countries, right? Like uh, Fiji, a collection of islands, are multiple polygons uh, together, right? So I have that geometry. And here you're going to see I have more information like the GDP and what continent we're in and the population estimate. Okay, so I have those two things. Um, let me explore a little bit more about what these are, right? So if I look at the type of this thing, so I look at the type of it, I see it's a geodata frame. And, um, and remember this thing, if I wanna look at uh, MRO, method resolution order, uh, that's not actually gonna work because I have to do that on the type, right? So if I put it back to type of that thing and then I look at the method resolution order, I see that, okay, well, there's a bunch of geo data frame methods and then and this other thing. And then this right here is where it gets interesting. You can see that, um, that geo data frames are um, basically a descendant of the regular data frames we are used to using, right? So everything you can do with a regular data frame, uh, you can do with this as well, right? And then there's some other um, ancestors of that as well, which I'm not trying to be too worried about. The other thing I can look at is if I look at, um, if I look at this column in particular, this geometry column, let's take a peek at that. Uh, what is the type of that thing? That is a geo series. And inside of a geo series, if I look at the method resolution order, I see that a geo series inherits from regular series, right? So everything we know about regular series will work with these geo series, plus there's some new features. Okay, so what, what exactly do we have in one of these series, right? So maybe let me do this. I'm going to take a peek at this. And, um, and let me just grab that first item, right? So I'll say I location zero. What is the type of that thing? Uh, the type of that is this thing that's called a multi-polygon, and that's inside of this shapely module. Okay, so... Uh, let me just try to tie all this together. We have these geo data frames, which are a kind of regular data frame. Uh, they'll have one special column, often called geometry, which is a, uh, a geo series. And then geo series contains different shapes inside of the shapely module. And if I want to, I can, I can grab this and I can uh, actually run it and it will show me what it looks like. I guess that one's not very interesting. Um, there's a country there's a country, let me let me check a couple more of these. I think that's Canada. And uh, and I think, well, there you go, there's the US, right? So if I look at what is the type of this thing that looks like the US, the US is a multi-polygon, right? It has to be, right? Because uh, we have one shape for uh, these states and then another one for Alaska and then some more for the Hawaiian Islands. Um, just, just to, I'm not trying to do this a lot in general, I just want to show you how easy it is to make uh, these multi polygons yourself. So I'm going to say from shapely dot geometry uh, import uh, polygon. So I'm going to do that. And then if I want to make a polygon, it's actually quite simple. So I can do this and then maybe I'll just do it like that. And then I'm going to look at what it, it looks like. And I can here have a, a list of points. And a point is just an XY coordinate, so I can have something like this here too, right? So I could say maybe I'll start at 0, 0, and then I'll go to 1, 1, 
And if I run this, it's going to complain because why? Uh, it has to have at least three coordinate tuples. So let me add another one. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, 2, 0. So I guess my x is going 0, 1, 2. And then my y values are going 0, 1, 0. So this should look like some kind of triangle. Um, and it does. If I wanted to make it a diamond, I guess I could start heading back, right? My x could go back to 1. And I could jump down to negative 1. And, and there we go. All right, so these shapely things, really easy to create shapes. And, um, and, and what, is, what is GeoPandas doing? GeoPandas is kind of pulling these things together. GeoPandas is building on top of regular pandas. And it's doing that by adding some new types that organize these shapely objects. Okay, so that's what GeoPandas does. Okay, so we have these things, right? So we have our, if I head back here, so I have my world uh, df. Um, and that geometry column, right? So if I pull out that geometry, which is a series, right? A geo series. Um, one of the things I can do with a geo series is I can plot it. Right, I do that and, and voila, I get a world map. Okay, I can also, if I want to, uh, whenever I have a, a one of these, right? Whenever I have this um, a geo data frame, uh, these things always have uh, geometry field, right? In this case, the geometry field happens to be the geometry column. And what that means is that when I do this, when I say plot, that's a really sh a shorthand for world, you know, oh yes, that's a shorthand for whatever my data frame is, dot geometry, dot plot. Right, this could be different columns. Right, so I plot that and I get the exact same thing. Uh, let me try to show you the difference. So if I go back to that geometry column, I um, have that column. It, it turns out that the geo series type has this thing called centroids. Um, uh, you might expect it to be a method, but it's not. It's just an attribute that gets created when the series is created. Is it centroid, perhaps? There it is. And, and so let me just look at both of these, right? So this first one, right, I have multi-polygon and polygon. When I add this, though, then I just do a bunch of points that are in the center of each of these. Okay, so, right, and this is a new geo series. If I want to, I can do something like this. I could say world df um, centers uh, equals this, and then I could peek at this again. So if I just look at what's in there, and, and now I actually have two columns that have um, that that have uh, geo series in them, right? So what's going to happen when I plot this? Now that I have these two, let me just say shorten that up a bit. If I say world a df a dot plot, it's still plotting this first one because that's what geometry is, right? So if I look at the geometry attribute, well, that's what I'm plotting. Um, so one of the things I can do is I can say uh, set geometry, and I could give it another name, right? I could say that now I want to plot the centers, okay? And this is a lot like that set index function, right? So this becomes a geometric uh, index. It's not actually changing world df. It's creating a new data frame, right? So I could say something like this, world df equals that, and then I could say world df dot plot. And, and now you see I have all these points, right? These are the centers. Okay, so what we'll often want to do is we'll want to plot these multiple columns. And so let me actually have I set this back. I want to go back to this geometry column here. And that's good. And, um, and so just like when I plot other things, um, I get an AX object back. Um, I can use that to plot other fields. So maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll just set the color of this. Uh, equal to this light gray color, and um, and then let me plot those centers, right? These are kind of the center of mass of each uh, country, geometrically speaking. And so I can say world GF, DF, and I want to plot the centers, and I want to plot those, and, um, and well, what happened there? No numeric data to plot. I think maybe I just have to put it where this pre 
previous one was. Well, that's a little bit strange. that's working so why can't I do that I want to basically say I want to say that my um, world df of centers equals the centroid and then I want to plot it here we go get rid of this line and then I want to plot those centers as well So that doesn't work, but if I do this, it does, right? Let me try that. And then let me set the color here. Well, actually, that plotted two different things. So I said AX equals AX. And then I can make those a different color. Um, let me make it a little bit smaller. So if I say like marker size equals three, there I go. I can see all those cities. Let me, um, I'm going to kind of follow up on this on offline and, and see why I can't do this, right? Why can't I do that? And I'll post an update later, but I'll just kind of go ahead with the demo for now. I'm probably just missing something silly. But anyway, so I can see that I can plot both of these, right? I can plot, plot both the countries and then also these centers on top of them. Okay, so let's um, let's look at, uh, as, as I said, right, these uh, geo data frames, we can do everything we can with a regular data frame. Uh, for example, we could filter rows using... Um, uh, Boolean selection. So let's see how we can combine that with our plotting. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to um, find all the countries in South America. All right. So I'm going to look at my world uh, DF, and then uh, I see that I have this continent field here. All right. So I can say um, when does that continent field uh, equal South America, just like so. And some of those ought to be true, right? So I'll, I'll create a variable SA, and then let me take a look at that. Um, actually, I'm sorry. So this gives me my Boolean series, and I actually have to use that. Use that like so. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and then I get all of these South American countries, and uh, then I can plot these like so. So that's good. Um, one of the things I can do if I want to, um, actually, let me just take a peek at this. Um, if I want to, I can have the color be based on uh, be based on one of these other columns, right? So it's almost like a heat map. So let me do this based on the population estimate. So I'm going to say SA.plot, and this time I'm going to say column equals population estimate. So I'm going to do that, and I can see, oh, okay, no surprise, uh, Brazil has the largest population. Um, and if I want to now, I can say something like legend equals true. And what does this mean? So Brazil is showing up as, as yellow here at the top. And so 1 to the, uh, or, or 10 to the 8, that is 100 million. So 200 million, and that is the population of Brazil, a little bit over 200 million. So I can do that. Um, uh, okay, so I think that's the, the, the key here. Let me, let me show you one more thing. So... I've been ignoring that, right? We have these cities from that other data frame that I read earlier, and I can plot these, right? So I can say that plot, like so, and I see I have all these cities all over the world. What happens if I want to combine that with this, right? What if I want to plot them here, and uh, and I want to plot them in the center? 
same area. So I want to do something like this. AX equals AX. Color equals red. You know, marker size equals 5. So that's okay. I mean, it's plotting in the right point, but now you see I'm getting like all these cities everywhere, right? What I'd really like to do is only grab the cities uh, that overlap with the continent I'm plotting, right? So how can I do that? Well, I may come back to this one. Let's let's figure that out. So I have all of these cities DF here, right? And I somehow want to filter these down. So I just have the ones that are overlapping with uh, with SA, right, South, uh, South America. And, um, and so the way I can do this is with geopandas.sjoin. Uh, that stands for uh, spatial join. And that can be used to do a lot of different things, but by default what it's trying to do is it's trying to look for overlap. And so I want to look for overlap between the cities of the world and South America. Right, so I run that. And um, and you can see, sure enough, I get a few of these cities that overlap with South America. You see it's South America and all of these. And I'm kind of getting this weird data frame, right, that has some stuff from Cities DF, right? But Cities DF had a name column that was the name of the city. Um, it changed that column to names left because South America also had a names column, names right, and that's showing up over here. Uh, but, it, but it doesn't matter because I got what I wanted, right? I got this geometry column. Uh, which is all the cities, right? That came from cities DF, and it's just the ones that overlapped with um, with uh, SA, right? So I can actually head back here now. I'm going to go back to this example, and maybe I'll call this SA cities equals this thing, and I'm just going to plot these SA cities uh, like so. And cool. Now I can have this nice map that shows me where the cities are, the big cities, and also the populations. Um, now, one last thing that you have to worry about is a spatial join. Uh, you have to have some sort of tree data structure for that to work, and that tree data structure, called an R tree, is not installed um, with GeoPandas by default. And uh, there's a Python package for it, but it's hard to even sell that Python package because it depends on some other packages that are not based on Python. And so the way you actually have to do that setup to follow through with this example is on your computer, you have to say something like apt uh, install python3 r tree. And of course, you have to do that as an admin user. So you'll say sudo. So you do that, and you run that in your shell, and then the rest of this should work. All right, thanks. So there will be 